Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about the four different types of foot braces that we commonly use in our skin on frame kayaks and what makes them more or less suitable for the different styles of boats that we build. Now, before we get into this, I just wanna make it really clear that generally speaking, you can trust the foot brace recommendation in the plan set for whatever type of kayak you're building. But I also know that sometimes people want to do things a little bit differently or certain foot braces may not be available in your area or maybe you've got a special needs scenario. And so in that case, you might want to choose a different foot brace than what's recommended in the plans. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to bring you in here really close and we're going to go into a ton of detail about the advantages and the disadvantages of each of these four different foot brace styles. That way, if you decide to do something different than the plan recommendation, you understand the consequences of that decision. All right, let's come in here and check this out. All right, so starting out with this Wilderness System slide lock foot brace, this is actually the foot brace system that I used in my modern kayaks for many years, but unfortunately it's not being produced right now. Although because some of these are still floating around in some of my kits and there's always the chance that they might start making these again, I'm gonna talk about this anyways. Now, one of the nice things about this foot brace is that it's much lighter than any of the other foot brace options I'm gonna show you here today. So if you're like me and you're an ultralight enthusiast, this foot brace is obviously a good choice for that. I also like the fact that it has five different potential attachment points, which is important because if you're gonna be screwing your foot brace directly to the wood, you have to have at least four fasteners installed. Otherwise, if you land with your full body weight on your toe pad, let's say you're pitch pulling in the surf, you're gonna rip this thing right out of the gunnel. Now, another thing that's nice about the Wilderness Systems is that this toe pad comes down at an angle. And when you pair that with the 25 degree angle gunnel that we use in our modern kayaks, that means that this actually is still low enough that you can reach up and touch it with your feet, which is a pretty important feature for any foot brace to have. Now, another nice thing about this toe pad is that even though it's comfortable, it's fairly low profile. And that's really helpful when you're camping out of a skin boat because if you're loading your gear in and out through the cockpit, if you have really long toe pads, it can make it really difficult to get your gear bags and your float bags in and out. Now, another thing that I like about this is that it has a very easy adjustment mechanism. Basically, this wand is very close to the cockpit, and what that means is that if you're out on the water and your foot braces don't feel quite right or you're getting uncomfortable, you can just pop your spray skirt, reach down, and adjust this to a different position to get comfortable again. But now we're starting to get into some of the things that I don't like about this foot brace, and one of them is that even though this is an easy adjustment mechanism, it's not a very positive adjustment mechanism. So if you're surfing or if you're in rough water, sometimes these can pop and you can lose your foot brace, which is inconvenient in a situation where you really need to maintain control of your kayak. And unfortunately, this wasn't a problem in the original version of this foot brace, but as the mold started to get older, this plastic spring in here started to deteriorate. And for about five or six years, all these foot braces have had that same problem. You can get around it by just building a little wedge to put in here to hold the foot brace in place, but it would be much better if it just worked the way that it was supposed to. Now, another thing that is not great about this particular foot brace, but may not be an issue just depending on your situation, is that it's not very versatile, meaning that unlike all the other foot braces you're about to see, it doesn't have different accessories that you can put on it, it can't be mounted at different heights, and there's no option for rudder control. So if any of those things are important to you, this is not a good foot brace for that. And then finally, this is not currently in production, which is a pretty big downside. So that is the Wilderness System slide lock foot brace. Now let's take a look at this Select foot brace, which is what we're putting in our modern kayaks today. Now, the first thing I like about the Select system is that it's really versatile and it has a lot of different options. And some of that relates to the foot brace itself, but a lot of it just relates to the change in installation method that we're using these days. Previously, because we had those four different attachment points, we were able to screw our foot braces directly to the gunnels. But now that we've moved on to foot braces that only have two attachment points, we actually have to bolt through the gunnels into T-nuts that are set from the back side. And that's actually kind of a downside because the locating and installation process for those T-nuts is a lot harder than what we did previously. However, once you've got your kayak set up that way, it's fantastic because it's really easy to install and also remove your foot brace tracks even after your kayak is already finished. 
So if you want to add a drop kit to lower your foot braces down or add rudder control or switch out any of these components, you can do that with that installation method. Now, the nice thing about the Select specifically is that they sell all of these different components separately. So if you start out with a standard Select foot brace and then you decide you wanna add different options, you can just order the things you need without having to purchase a whole new foot brace track. Now, getting into the foot brace track itself here, one of the things I like about the Select system is that this track is extremely strong and this foot brace is very stiff. And both of those things together are gonna to give you a more solid feel of connection to your kayak than any of the other foot braces that you're gonna see here today. Also, this adjustment method is rock solid. Basically, once you move this into position and lock this lever down, there is no possibility that your foot brace is gonna slide out of position. Now, getting into the uh, toe pad geometry here, just like the Wilderness Systems foot brace, you can see this toe pad comes down a little bit further. And when you pair that with a gunnel mounted position on one of my modern kayaks, it means that you're still gonna be able to reach this with the tips of your feet, which once again, is pretty important for any foot brace to have. Now, also, this is a fairly low profile toe pad, which means that if you're gonna be doing a lot of camping out of your kayak, it's gonna be much easier to load gear in and out of the front of the boat. Now, it's worth mentioning that if you wanna have even more of your foot on this toe pad, you can install a drop kit and lower this down in the kayak, although typically I don't recommend that for people unless you have very small feet or you wanna add rudder control to this foot brace assembly because the lower that you put this, the further it pushes it inwards and the harder it is to get your float bags and your gear bags in and out of the front of the kayak. So I guess the only real downsides to the Select foot brace is that one, this adjustment mechanism here is a little bit harder to operate than the wand style. Basically, it's a two-stage process where you turn this 90 degrees, then you slide the foot brace, and then you lock this back down, which is something that you can accomplish on the water by moving this with your toes. It's just not quite as easy as just lifting the wand up like you're gonna see on the Smart Track foot braces and like you already saw on the Wilderness System foot brace. Now, a final thing, which is pretty minor, but it's worth mentioning, is that I typically don't install these in Greenland kayaks because this is a much thicker foot brace assembly. And when you're talking about a foot area that is that much smaller, every inch counts in here. So if I'm gonna be putting a modern style adjustable foot brace in a traditional Greenland kayak, in that case, I'm usually going with one of these smart track foot braces. Now, this looks very similar to the Wilderness System style foot brace I showed you earlier, but the difference is this whole thing is much better constructed and this adjustment mechanism actually works because there's a metal spring in the end. So when you move this and lock it down, it's not gonna accidentally pop out of position. And I think this is actually a very well constructed foot brace. It just creates some functional issues in our applications. So for example, because this toe pad sticks out perpendicular from the track and it's also much longer than any of the other toe pads I've showed you so far, if you mount this up higher on the gunnels in one of my modern kayaks, your toes are actually gonna be sitting somewhere down here and this longer toe pad is gonna interfere with sliding your float bags and your gear bags in and out of the front of the kayak if you wanna go camping. And if you drop this thing down on a drop kit to get better purchase for your feet, that's just gonna make that interference issue even worse. And so I'm not gonna say that I never put these in a modern kayak, but if I want to be able to camp out of a modern kayak, I'm not gonna go with this style of foot brace. One of the reasons I might want to go with one of these, however, is that this does give you the option to add the tow pilot rudder control system, which is something that some people prefer if they're gonna be adding a rudder. Now, on the other hand, if you're putting this in one of my traditional Greenland kayaks, it actually works pretty well because in that case, the foot area is much shallower, which brings the whole foot brace down lower, so your feet are actually on this toe pad, and these toe pads being a little bit longer isn't a problem because you're never trying to camp out of a traditional Greenland kayak. Now, additionally, these tracks are twice as narrow as the Select tracks, which gives you one inch more horizontal foot room, which is really nice in the already restricted foot area of a traditional Greenland kayak. And then finally, this wand style adjustment right here is the only adjustment that you can actually manipulate from the narrow ocean cockpit in a traditional Greenland kayak. And so for all those reasons, if I'm gonna be putting foot braces at all in a traditional Greenland kayak, I'm typically going with this smart track design 
Although, I just want to interject here for a moment and mention that there are a couple of significant downsides to using this style of foot brace in a traditional Greenland kayak. And the first one is that even though these tracks are thinner than any of the other tracks I've got here today, they still have significant thickness. And anytime you're talking about a foot area that is as small as a traditional Greenland kayak, especially if you're someone with larger feet, you're gonna notice a significant difference in comfort between just resting your foot on the outside of the gunnel like you would with a traditional Greenland arrangement versus resting your feet on the inside of this plastic track. Now, additionally, the track and the foot brace actually takes up longitudinal room that could otherwise be used for your leg length, which means that at least with the way that my Greenland kayaks are laid out, sometimes people with longer legs and larger feet aren't gonna be able to use these tracks, but they would still be able to use a traditional Greenland foot brace, which is just a deck beam pegged in the correct location. And unfortunately, I can't give you any specific guidance on which leg lengths would work and which ones won't because it's a moving target just depending on the scale of the Greenland kayak that you decided to build, the length of your legs, and also the size of your feet. What I will say though, is that if you purchase a set of these from me and you find out that you don't have enough longitudinal adjustment for the length of your legs, I'm happy to take a return on these. And in that case, you can always go back to the traditional arrangement, which is probably gonna be more comfortable anyways. Now, one final downside of these foot braces is that compared to the traditional Greenland deck beam, this is going to add an extra pound to the overall weight of your kayak, which is not an insignificant amount of weight in a kayak that's already only weighing 26 to 31 pounds. And then I guess one more thing I forgot to mention is that for my East Greenland kayaks, at least the way that I've got them currently framed, those are not compatible with these foot braces. And so hopefully in the future, I'll do a redesign on that kayak and I'll change the geometry so I can use these in there as well. But until you see version 2.0 on my East Greenland kayak, you can't put these foot braces in there. So aside from some of those functional issues that just relates to some of our specific applications, I would say the only real general downside of this foot brace is that the whole track is a little bit flexible and the toe pad is a little bit wobbly and both those things together just makes this feel kind of spongy on your feet. It's not terrible, it's just not quite as crisp and solid as the Select style attachment. So anyways, that is the Smart Track foot brace. Now let's take a look at a variation on it, which is the Smart Track Performance foot brace. And what you're looking at here is the same style toe pad, the same adjustment mechanism, but instead of being mounted on a plastic track, it's mounted in an aluminum channel, which is a lot stronger and stiffer and does help to deal with some of that flexibility that I was just talking about, although not completely because this foot pad is still pretty wobbly. And the time that I would choose this particular foot brace is if I was thinking about adding rudder control in the future, because just like all of the foot braces that I've just showed you, you can retrofit all the different rudder components onto this. And the nice thing about the performance model here is that the adjustment for the rudder cable is actually at the front of the track, which means that you can adjust it on the water, which just makes it so much easier to micro adjust your rudder. So if you think you might be adding rudder control to your kayak in the future, and this is the foot brace system you're going with, I would recommend this one right here because that adjustability from the cockpit is just a huge advantage. Now, getting into some of the downsides of this particular foot brace, the first one is that this is just a very heavy piece of hardware. So, for example, the slide lock foot braces that I showed you in the beginning are 18 ounces for the pair, the Select foot braces are 23 ounces for the pair, and the Smart Track standard foot braces are 21 ounces for the pair, but a pair of these is 31.8 ounces, which is a lot of extra weight to be adding to your kayak if you don't actually need it. Now, another potential downside is that because this only screws in from the back, you can't mount this directly to the gunnels. However, in practice, that's usually not a big deal because usually whenever I'm using this particular style of foot brace, I'm adding the toe pilot rudder control, which means that I'm already dropping this down on a drop kit. Also, this track is thicker than any of the other foot brace tracks that I've showed you so far, which means that if you're installing this in a traditional Greenland kayak, that's just gonna further reduce the horizontal foot room and increase the possibility that you're gonna run into comfort issues. 
And so for all those reasons, the only time that I'm usually using this particular foot brace track is if I'm installing this in one of my modern kayaks where I want rudder control and I don't care about the ability of loading camping gear in and out through the cockpit. And a good example of that might be a dedicated racing kayak where I really like the functionality of the tow pilot system and also the ability to micro adjust the rudder from the cockpit while I'm in the boat. And I do want to talk a lot more about the rudder systems that are associated with all three of these foot braces, but this video is getting kind of long right now. So I think I'm going to stop and then in a separate video, I'm going to show you all three of these foot braces set up with their rudder control components and some of the advantages and disadvantages of that. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for this video. Once again, this was an excerpt from one of my online skin on frame boat building courses. So if you like what you saw here and you're interested in skin on frame building, think about checking out our website, capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got a bunch more skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can find us on Instagram at Cape Falcon Builds, where we post a daily build blog of everything we're working on in the shop. And just like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check out the Instagram feed because there is so much more cool stuff there than ever shows up on the YouTube channel and sometimes not even in my paid classes. Okay, take care, be safe on the water, have fun building your skin boat.